What's up, everybody? Hope you guys are having an amazing day. I've gotten a lot of people in the last few days that have asked me, what is my opinion and what are my thoughts on some of the volatility we're seeing in the markets around some specific individual issue securities, right? Things like GameStop and AMC and BlackBerry. And so unless you've been living under a rock, you, you maybe have missed the story that these stocks were driven up by essentially social media users banding together and all deciding to buy the stock at the same time and to force that stock higher. Now, why did they do this? Well, they did this because what it really came down to was a couple of really, really savvy people noticed that the short interest was higher and that they knew that the professionals were going to have to cover. And some of these some of these stocks, like, for example, GameStop, uh, GameStop had, had a billionaire investor that had just come in behind it. They had uh, a, a brand new cycle of new new games. I mean, there were fundamental reasons for the stock to start to overperform. And so it was overshorted and an undervalued stock, which now told people, hey, here's an opportunity to step in and buy this security at a really low price. Well, what that did is that caused a short squeeze. And so if you understand how shorting works, you got to sell to get in, you buy to get out. So now everybody who sold up high and they wanted to buy down back low, they were unable to get out because all of these new investors that were buying decided to drive that price higher. And driving it higher and higher and higher, it was nothing more than the pure concepts that we talk about every day, which is when there are no more willing sellers at a given price, you're going to see price rise until it runs into willing sellers, right? A price cannot happen. A trade cannot execute without a willing buyer and a willing seller. And the market's job is simply to go find a balance between willing buyers and willing sellers. So I, I've heard from a lot of people, they say, well, Chuck, did you participate in this? And I did not. This is not something that I normally look at. And it's, you know, I, 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 was, I was not involved in, and I'm not going to go chasing price as it starts to run. There's a lot of other good opportunities out there that aren't so volatile. Say, so that's the first thing that I'll say is I don't necessarily think it's a good idea or a prudent idea for an educated investor or, or trader to go out and chase uh, this volatility because there's a lot more opportunity in things that are a little bit less volatile and, and performing a little bit more like normal market regularities. That being said, do I think that the brokerage firms should have come out and, and said, hey, you're not allowed to trade this particular stock out of an abundance of caution, which is my new trigger word, um, <laughs> the, the abundance of caution? Well, here's the interesting thing about trading stock. If you're putting the money in the market, you've got to be willing to lose it. If you're putting the money in the market, you have to be willing to lose it. And so, and so you're, you're going to lose what you put out. I can understand not allowing these things to be traded on margin and not risking the firm's capital. But as an individual investor, you should be able to, to, to make your own choices and assess your own risk. And the brokerage firms didn't necessarily allow people to do that as they've restricted trade in some of these securities. So what if you're in one of these securities? Well, most of the brokerage firms are allowing you to get out of the positions. You just can't reinitiate a position. Um, and so how can I profit from this in the future? Well, I would say that the best way to understand how to profit from this in the future is to understand that market forces were simply at play. They were just at play at a, at a, at a louder volume than what people are used to seeing. It was nothing more than the imbalance of buyers and sellers at particular price points that caused those prices to move. And so what, what I would say is the best way to take advantage of this is to understand that that imbalance does exist. It's okay that that imbalance exists. And there are ways in order to take advantage of that imbalance when you understand how, how those pure forces of supply and demand work. Now, I'm not a huge fan of market manipulation in any way, whether it comes from a regulatory body that is, that is forcing uh, particular trading rules or whether it comes from the brokerage firm that doesn't allow the individual investor or trader to take a particular amount of risk. And the market will always find a way. Right? The market will always find a way. The free and fair market will always find a way, provided that our markets are always free and fair. And so the ability for you as an investor and a, and a, and a trader is really going to be around identifying these opportunities in multiple time frames out of the thousands of securities that are available. So if you missed out on AMC and you missed out on GameStop and you missed out on BlackBerry and you're wondering, what's the next one? Right? What's the next big thing? The next big thing is just knowing that there doesn't have to be a next big thing. Because if I can understand how the markets move on a regular basis and understand that supply and demand, then it's going to make me that much more readily available. So all in all, my, my bottom line message here is don't get that fear of missing out. Don't get FOMO. Don't get caught up in the hype. And just understand that supply and demand still rules the day. 
and that you can understand how markets move significantly better when you understand market forces. Thanks so much, everybody. Have a good day.